Marianne, today's International Women's Day, and here we are in Cyprus at a women's football tournament. Now, you've obviously played for England, you're now coaching England, but if we can go right back to the start, how did you first get involved in the game? Um, I first got involved in playing football through my brother, my dad and my uncle really, playing out on the green outside the house um, and then trans went into a netball, a youth club, for, like a girls youth club and five of us wanted to play football so we were kicking the netballs around so they put us uh, into a five-a-side team and we entered the Metropolitan Police five-a-side competition and we won it. So it was from there, right, that we played the final at Wembley Arena and there was about 8,000 people. It was the biggest tournament. In, it went into the Guinness Book of Records and everything. And just seeing the mix of, there was uh, age groups for boys and girls and it really got me the buzz and the real thinking that, do you know what, I might be a girl, but I, there's the opportunity to play football at a good level. What was all this football like back then? I think I was quite fortunate because I was playing, I say fortunate, I was playing at 13 in a women's league and in a senior women's league. Um, there wasn't the, the pathway that there is now, it was literally I was 13 playing senior women's football in a, the uh, Hounslow and District Women's League. Um, so there was a it, there was a real, there was some structure to it, but not a pathway, if that makes sense. So if you were old enough, you played football um, in the women's game, but not necessarily, there wasn't any centres of excellences or any player development centres. So it was a case of if you play and you were playing in senior women's football or in a youth club or something quite um, informally. You played 91 times for your country. You scored 28 goals? 28 goals, yeah. In your wildest dreams, did you ever think you'd get near 100 caps? No, I think I always looked at every time I played, I wanted to be in the next squad. And then when I played again, I wanted to be in the next squad. And then obviously I had a break between 95 and 99 when I gave, had my daughter. And even then I thought, I won't get, oh, you know, the time will move on. I'm getting a little bit older now and I have different priorities. But it, probably that break did me good because my priorities did change. And it made me relax a little bit more because my first priority was my daughter. The next thing I had to think about was football. So I'd, I'd eased off the pressure on myself probably and relaxed probably for the first time playing football and really, really enjoyed it. And when I got the letter, I had something like 76 caps, but I felt like the new girl going back into the squad. So it was, it was an exciting time again because of the differences and how much it had changed. And fast forward to today, um, I mean, how different is women's football now than it was when you were playing? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot more structure, there's a lot more support. You work with the squad now and the support, the support around it is fantastic. Strength and conditioning, you know, we'd, uh, we'd make the choice of whether we got in from work and went for a run. Now you can't get away with whether you do the run or not. But, but also the, the speed of the game, the technical ability of the players, you know, the, the, just the growth has been immense. But as you, as you grow, you, you sort of grow into not to keep up, but get in advance of other squads. And, and it's, it's really, it's always been competitive, but there's another edge to that competitiveness now. It's, there's so many teams that can be in the top four. It's, um, it's really great to be back involved. You've obviously decided to go into coaching once you hung up your boots. Um, was it wanting to still be involved in the game that made you want to do that? Or was it something you decided on at an earlier age? I still felt like a player even though my legs didn't feel like a player, my head still felt like a player. And it took me a bit of time to really understand football, because everything you do as a player, you do naturally from cues and triggers on the, on the pitch. But you have to break that down as a coach and you have to analyse it. So I think to step away sometimes is the best thing, to learn and educate yourself as a coach. And then I went down the coach education route. So I, I learned about speaking in front of people, breaking things down with people and group work and dealing with groups of people. So I think where I am now is a pr a probably from 10 years ago when I packed up playing, making the decision to what do I, I haven't enjoyed this experience now, what do I need to do to enjoy it in the future? And it's gone through different routes. And was that development, was that ever with the aim of, of wanting to one day coach an England team or is that just a, something that's happened as the years have gone by? 
I think you kind of, um, you always have it in the back of your mind, but it's not something that I was driven by. I always wanted to have, I wanted to have that dream, but not be driven by it. Cause it you know, I really enjoyed the coach education side as well. But when the opportunity came up, I probably realised how excited I and how much it did mean to me to do it. I think you kind of quell it a bit just in case it doesn't happen. But when the opportunity, like I said, when the opportunity came up, it I suddenly realised how excited I was by um, God. This is a, this is an England team, an international team, and to be on the other side from playing to now having the opportunity to be on the coaching staff, it's yeah, it's just totally embracing it and living the dream. And how have you found things working with Mark and, and Lee Kendall so far? Yeah, it's been really, you know, like I said, just living the dream, loving every minute, picking things up, learning from Mark, learning from Lee. You know, we sit in a national coaches meetings now, um, you know, with all the, the national coaches within the FA and, and just picking up so much information. It's, you, you go, I'm just absolutely buzzing every day, absolutely buzzing.